Hello everybody, welcome back to ECMATH. This is this uh, part two of section P.1. We are gonna talk about sets and set notation. This is a really interesting topic that shows up in a lot of mathematics. It doesn't really show up a lot, lot in math four, but it, it's something that our book will use and your teachers will use. So it's, it's kind of part of the, the shared language. It's again, kind of like uh, with number sets before, it's stuff that, um, is fundamental just to, to understand what your teachers and your books are writing. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, in math, a set is a collection of objects. Uh, that's it. Uh, now those objects can be anything. Uh, so here are some examples of sets. Um, they're usually written, by the way, with these uh, curly brackets or, or braces around them. An example of a set might be a set of numbers. Um, I'm going to make an infinite set of numbers. So sets can be finite or they can be infinite. My set of numbers might be the uh, even positive integers. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And now if you have an infinite set, you can just kind of eventually write enough elements to establish the pattern and then include a little uh, three dots, a little ellipsis, and say, hey, that's a set. Um, the Pieces of a set are called the elements of a set. Reminds me of chemistry. Uh, they're the building blocks of that set, but we, we often use that word element to talk about these different little pieces. Um, but sets, again, don't have to be made of numbers. You could have a set made of shapes. I could have a set of blue triangle, red square, uh, orange circle, and green cat. And that would be a perfectly valid mathematical set. They don't even have to all be shapes, right? One of them is a cat. Um, I could have that set. And then I could also have the number 12 in my set if I wanted to. So that's another example of a set. It's, an, it's a set with five elements. And there they are. They're lovely. Now, where would you use that set? I don't know. Not, not very often. I would say most of the time we in Math 4 use sets of numbers. Uh, and mostly we use sets of either integers or sets of real numbers. You know, you know, watch the last video on number sets for, for more information on that. We'll mostly be thinking about sets of, of numbers. Um, all right, so there's some ideas related to sets. And the first idea is the idea of union. Uh, a union is basically the plus sign for sets. It's the way that we join two sets. We'll get to those circles in a little bit. Um, union is given, is actually like an operation, so kind of like uh, a plus, but for sets. So you always have a union in between two sets. Uh, you use the capital U for union. It's not exactly the same as, as a capital U. You know, like this is a capital U and this is the union symbol. You notice they're a little bit different, but they're basically the same, especially if you're writing by hand. Um, union of two sets is all elements, is it, well, we'll say it's a new set so just like if you take two numbers and you add them, you get another number. If you have two sets and you union them or unite them, I guess, uh, you get a new set that is all elements of both. So one, the set one, two, three union with the set three, six, nine would be the set. Again, you do a little curly brace to say you're starting a set one, two, three. Now I don't have to write the three twice. It's sets don't really take repeats. They're just more about like, what are the pieces of these sets? So I would do one, two, three, three's already there. I would do three, uh, then six, and then nine. And that would be my new set uh, of one, two, three, union three, six, nine. Uh, one way to think about this is if you go back to your idea of a Venn diagram, maybe this is set A, maybe, you know, one, two, three is set A and three, six, nine is set B. If you draw this out, Here's set A, here's set B. The union is everything contained in both sets. So it, it would be like shading the entire diagram. And that would be the union. Um, and in math, we, for, we say for an element to be in the union, it has to be in A or B. This is mostly for the programmers among you. Uh, in programming, there's a big difference between or and, and there's also this exclusive or. 
um, union in math corresponds with kind of the programming idea of or of two sets or the logic idea of or. Um, so that's the idea of union is if it's a way to, to take two sets and kind of glue them together or stick them together. Uh, now, what about the opposite of that? Uh, we have the intersection. And I guess you could say this is kind of like the subtraction of sets. It's, it's not as much like addition as, as union is like, or as union is very similar to addition. This isn't really like subtraction, um, but this is called the intersection. We use the symbol upside down U, which doesn't really have a name other than just being the intersection symbol. Um, and how do you compute the intersection of things? This is, uh, I'm actually going to go to the diagram first. The, if this is set A and this is set B, the intersection is everything that is contained in uh, both. Contained, uh, or we'll say, I, I like the word shared between. Or uh, another helpful idea is the overlap of the sets. So the set 1, 2, 3 and 3, 6, 9 has the element 3 in both. The intersection of these two sets is the single element set of 3, of, of consisting of the number 3. And that would be the intersection of 1, 2, 3 and 3, 6, 9. And for intersection, uh, we say for an element to be an intersection of A uh, and B, it must be in A and B. And again, this is that like logical operator. So this is for the programmers among you. You will want to say uh, intersection correlates with the programming idea of and. That is, you must be in both sets. You must be in A and you must be in B. Then you are in the intersection of those sets. I'm going to say from here on out, um, I'm going to keep talking about sets for probably another 10 minutes. But I think these are the two main ideas of what is a set, union, and intersection that you probably need to complete your homework from chapter uh, P.1. Uh, but I would really encourage you to watch later because we are going to talk about some different types of sets, things you'll see later, and something called set builder notation, which is uh, also pretty important. So I, I would like you to keep watching. But union and intersection are the main ideas we use in Math 4. Okay, so here's another thing that sometimes comes up, um, which is unions and intersections. Hey, those things again of intervals, and technically an interval is another type of set. Uh, it's a set of real numbers, uh, and technically it's the set, um, I'm saying the interval 2, 9, is the set of real numbers. Remember, like all real numbers, real numbers are, uh, where uh, we'll say x is greater than or equal to 2, and x is less than or equal to 9, right? So it's just sort of a set with some conditions, um, but that's still a set. Uh, we'll talk about how to write this. There's actually a really nice way to write this in something called set builder notation. Later we'll talk about. Um, but I want to talk about uh, now how do you compute unions and intersections of these interval sets? Uh, because if they're two sets, you should be able to take their union and take their intersection. Well, it's not as bad as you think. Remember that union is kind of like the plus sign of sets, so you're going to glue them together and create a new set that is kind of like these two sets glued together. So what I'll do is uh, graph 1, 3. I like to draw things on the number line, by the way, with just these symbols. Remember that this means included, and it would be like having a closed dot, but I'm just going to do a bracket up to 3, which is not included. and would have an open dot. So you could draw it like that. I like to kind of draw it with uh, this, just using the brackets. It helps me remember the notation. And then uh, from 2 to 9, I would have a closed bracket and a, a closed bracket at 9. And that would be my number set. Now the inter union is those two sets glued together. So you can kind of imagine that I take this set, move it just straight down, stick it right on top of this thing, glue, 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 glue together. Uh, and I get a new interval that is closed on the 1, so it includes the 1, and it includes the 9. So that's the union of those two intervals. Not so bad. 
Now let's say I wanted to compute the intersection of the same two intervals. So I've just uh, copied my two intervals from above uh, and drawn them out again. Now the intersection is the overlap, right? Think about the middle piece of the Venn diagram. So I think about where are these sets overlapping? Well, you, know, you could imagine them placed on top of each other again. I'm going to use my highlighter though. Uh, they definitely both contain two. And then from two all the way up, to three, uh, they seem to be overlapping, but it is a question, is should three be included? That is, should I write the answer is, uh, the answer is gonna be two comma three, but should it be three parentheses or three bracket? Well, because three is not included in the top set, then it cannot be included in the intersection. So it is actually correct to write two comma three with a parentheses to say that three is not included in both. So three is not included in the intersection. Uh, by the way, there's another wrong answer to this that some people will give in addition to writing two, three. Some people might just say, well, if three is not included and then, then the only piece of the intersection is two, and they would just write the number set two. But if you're someone who might say that, I would say to you, you're not thinking about all the real numbers in between two and three. So it's important when you're doing unions and intersections on the number line to not think about integers, but think about all real numbers. It's one of the biggest mistakes of math four is thinking about integers when you really should be thinking about reals or sometimes the reverse, thinking about uh, reals when you should be really thinking about integers. Um, but yeah, in this case, you want to include all the integers because we're dealing with intervals on a number line. All right, let's do one more. Uh, now let's say I wanted to look at the interval one, three. Intersection with the interval four, nine. Uh-oh. Well, the other one barely had an intersection, and now I can see that there's no overlap, right? There's there's a big space in between. And so this uh, has no elements. And a set with no elements, you could write it as, uh, it would be weird to write it as an interval, but you could write it as just a, a set of empty braces. That is called the empty set, the empty set. Um, and that's a really important set, shows up a lot. Uh, so the empty set is the set with nothing, we'll say no elements. And you can write it in a couple ways. You can write it as a pair of braces with nothing inside. It is sometimes written as a zero with a slash through it. Um, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. And sometimes you just say empty set or, or nothing. Um, I want to give you a caution. This is, this is uh, my caution about the zero with a slash through it. The problem with the zero with a slash through it is that it looks like a zero, especially if some of you have learned to write zeros with a little like dash in between. There's also uh, later on in physics, a couple things like the Greek letter phi that looks like this or the Greek letter theta that looks like this. So the essential kind of like circle with a line through it, if you, especially if you don't have very good handwriting like, like me, um, you can get in a lot of trouble with this. So be real careful with that. Um, and I'll give you an example here right now. Um, say that you were solving the, the system of equations. And I don't know this is not the systems chapter, but I'm pretty sure you can solve this system. Uh, the solutions to the system y equals 2x plus 1 and y equals 2x plus 4. What are, what are the intersections of those lines? Well, um, they're parallel. Oh, right, slope of 2, slope of 2. So if those lines are parallel, there is no intersection. Um, now, here's uh, what you may have learned in the past is from some teachers, and it's, it's okay, they're not wrong, it's just something that I don't like. Uh, you might have learned to say, oh, there's no intersection, let me write that. All right, let me write the empty set symbol. Here's the problem with that. What if you're just a little bit lazy, or maybe you're someone who writes the empty set symbol like this, but you write a zero like that? 
and maybe you're in a rush and I can't tell. If I see that symbol and I read it as a zero, that's wrong, right? Zero is a number. That'd be say, oh, these lines meet at zero, which is not what's happening in this case. So I would say if there's any, any chance, any chance that you could mix up your answer for the empty set symbol with a zero, don't use that symbol. Instead, write out the words, no intersection, no real solutions, or give me a nice empty bracket uh, as your empty set. That, that's really probably the best way to do it. Um, you know, I wanted to, to give that as an example just because it does come up sometimes. Uh, I always hate having to look at students' work and say, hey, is that a zero or an empty set? What did they mean? Especially if one of them is right and the other is wrong, and I just can't tell their meaning. Let's end today by talking about set builder notation. Now, set builder notation is kind of the formal, fancy way to write sets. I will never, in our class, require you to use set builder notation. Um, but what you might see is it's, it will be used in our book, for example. Uh, it will be used, you might see it written uh, on a, a quiz or test. And it might also sometimes just be the best, most efficient way to record your answers. So I think it's good for you to learn set builder notation. But if you're looking at it now and your brain is full and you're like, that's too many symbols, then fine. Don't worry about set builder. Um, but I want to close with it because I like it. All right. So set builder is kind of like uh, turning the idea of a set into a sentence. Um, we always start with uh, a set, right? So this is still enclosed with little set brackets because I have a, I'm making a set. Then I say uh, my subject. What variables am I working with? Then I draw a vertical line that the vertical line stands for the words such that. So we'll say such that. Then over here, is where I put some information about X. All right, so I said X is my subject. I'm making a set out of this variable X. Here are the rules that I would like to establish for X. You can have a single rule. You can have multiple rules. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You just kind of put them all in that set. Um, here are the two rules I've established. Uh, I wrote this. Now, I use another symbol here because this is nothing if not about symbolic. This little goofy E uh, stands for is an element of, and this little N stands for the natural numbers. So what I'm saying is there's, is there some variable X? X is an element of the natural numbers, which means it's a natural number, and I wrote comma, and in this sense, you don't need me to decode, to decode, x is greater than 4. So if I were to write out this set in numbers, I would say, okay, I need natural numbers, which are the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but greater than 4, so I would probably start with 5, 6, 7, 8, and then the natural numbers are infinite, so I would not stop. I would just write uh, an ellipses. So that's set builder notation. You have your subject, you have your variable, your subject, the vertical line means such that. This little uh, goofy E means is an element of. It's often used for number systems, right? Like I said earlier, it's really important to know, are you working in the natural numbers? Are you working in the real numbers? Um, yeah. And then x greater than 4. Uh, so here's another example of set builder. We talked about the interval 1, 3. Uh, so I would write the interval 1, 3 in set builder in the following way. I would say, all right x such that x is greater than or equal to 1 and x is less than but not equal to because it's a parentheses 3 and here I am using the important logical connector and because I need both of those statements to be true, right? If only one of those is true, then uh, I might not really be capturing the sense of this interval. So that's a, a nice way, and I guess I should write, uh, I need a little space. 
I said before, I sh you should always say what sort of number set you're looking at. So I should say x is an element of the real numbers, x is greater than 1, and x is less than 3. That's the set builder formal way to write this interval. Now, obviously, you probably have a preference. I would rather write the interval than I would write this in set builder. But an interval is a set, so any set can probably be written in set builder. Um, set builder kind of feels like a waste. You know, sometimes you're like, why would I do all this when I could just like list the numbers or, or list the interval? Um, but set builder is really powerful because sets can be really complicated. And the more complicated your set, the better set builder is for describing it. So here's an example, uh, and this is the last one of the video, so thank you for sticking around for so long. This is the last, uh, this is an example uh, of set builder notation that I think is very useful. So I'm saying here I have points of coordinates x, y. So I can say, ah, my set now is made of points. Okay, tell me more about the points, right? Remember this line means such that. And I'd say x and y are real numbers. Right? x, y are an element of the real numbers. And then I said x is greater than or equal to 0, and y is greater than or equal to x. So what would I be talking about here? I'm actually talking about a shaded region in the plane. I'm saying all real numbered points, that's everywhere in the plane, right? Everywhere in the plane is a real numbered point. Get out of here, points. Where x is greater than 0 and y is greater than x, so that's saying, hey, make the line y equals x. Right? You can imagine all the points in the plane everywhere around here, but only half of them are y greater than x. So I'm talking about a triangular region in the plane. Right? So I can use set builder to describe uh, things like planar regions, which is something that you, you can't really do an interval for. Like this is actually, I think, the best way to do it. Remember, we do little arrows on the planar region to say, hey, it extends. And that would be something uh, that's, that's really concise for describing that planar region. Um, and then one other thing that you could do is easily change this set. So say, I don't want a planar region. Sorry, Mr. Eck, that's, that's not my, my thing right now. Uh, let's make this natural numbers instead. Remember, natural numbers are just the integers. 1, 2, 3. I, actually, I would probably write integer z. So I would say, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, positive and negative. Well, then I'd be talking about the region in the plane where y is greater than x, except I'm only looking at integers. So it would be like a bunch of dots in that same region. Uh, is greater than or equal to, so it would be on the axis. And, uh, you, you get the picture. But just changing a little piece in that set could actually kind of change what's going on. Is it a whole shaded region of real numbers, or is it just a, a smaller region of integers? All right. From here, this really is the last stuff you'll need in Math 4, but if you're interested, I'm going to talk for another couple minutes about other cool stuff you can do with sets and set notation, uh, going back to like the Venn diagrams. So we're going to get a couple more Venn diagrams if you're interested for sticking around. Um, one other set idea that, that, again, is not really important for Math 4 is the idea of the complement. Uh, the complement of a set is all elements of you know, the universe, whatever set of numbers we're talking about. Are we talking, if we're talking about the real numbers or the integers or whatever, uh, that are not in A. And you often you write A as uh, A to the C. It's not really an exponent. It's just like a, a C superscript. Sometimes you'll write it as A prime. Um, I think those are the two main notations. That's called the complement of A. So for example, if my universe was integers, so you kind of draw a big box around it, and set A was the even integers, then A complement would be all the odd integers. And together, A union with A complement would give you all integers. So that's the complement, is it's kind of the, the opposite of a set. Um, you do have to kind of know what universe you're in for that to really make sense. So complement. 
you can, of course, combine complement with Venn diagrams in multiple sets. So A complement intersect B. Okay, A complement is everything that's not in A. So that'd be like everything outside of A, including all the stuff that's in that green circle. Everything outside of A intersected with B. So B intersect means the overlap. So that would be everything where the yellow overlaps with B. Ooh, 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 and shade all that in. And so A complement intersect B is, in this case, this kind of like cool little half moon uh, shape. So you can start to layer in these ideas of complements, unions, and intersections to uh, really dial into the different parts of a set or a, a set notation spot. Um, so I think that's really fun. These are really neat little logic problems, really. Uh, and I wish we had time to do more of them. Um, here's another thing you'll sometimes see. I, I see this all the time on, on math team tests, but you know, it, they're, again, they're, I think they're just fun. Um, you might have a three-stage Venn diagram, A, B, and C, with different overlaps. And you might say, all right, A union B intersects C. Now, when you have triple ones like this, you want to follow orders of operations. So you do parentheses first. A union B would be, I'm just going to uh, highlight the outside, not color the whole thing. A union B is everything in A and everything in B. Intersected with C, though, is everything overlapping with C. So there's C. So everything overlapping is like this region right here that's in C and also in my red uh, like little circle. So that's a cool nested operation. A union B intersect C. Oh, did I manage to delete set C? That was real slick of me. So it would be that shaded region. Now let's clear all that out. What if I said do? So I'm keeping the same letters, and I'm just moving the parentheses to show you how important these order of operations are. A union with B intersect C. OK, B intersect C is the overlap of B and C. So I'm going to do B intersect C is this. Union means combine with everything in A doesn't matter that that little area that's now kind of black or blue is counted twice. A union B intersect C actually kind of looks like this versus this other one that looked kind of like a mustache. So we got a mustache and a duck um, I think that looks like a duck. Quack, quack. But, um, you know, just moving those parentheses around. So that's a nested mathematical set operation. Uh, not really important, not something that's that I'm going to quiz you on, um, but just a fun little problem about union and intersection. So uh, those are some related ideas of complement and nested operations with more than one, more than two sets. All right, well, this went on for a little longer than I thought, but that's all right. Uh, set notation is, is a really important part of mathematics. It uh, shows up in a lot of surprising places, and once you start getting into math that's, that is really complicated, uh, it usually involves sets in some way, and this is kind of the foundational language for all of that going forward. So uh, hopefully it's been useful. Again, you know, read the section in your book. Uh, if I think it would help a little bit. Um, if there's any errors, put them in the comments below so we can all learn together. If you have any questions, email me or ask your teacher. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you next time.